In this class, the subject matter of our class <coughs> is initiation. And it is important for us to realize that the consciousness is initiated by changes of consciousness, consciously. In other words, we go from one level of understanding and realization to another by small and larger initiation steps. And when the consciousness changes even ever so slightly in the understanding of some cosmic truth or cosmic law or some meaning or cause that lies behind something that's going on out here in the world, there is definitely an initiatory process taking place in the consciousness. The purpose of the Rosicrucian teachings is to teach us the techniques by which we can do this in various ways. The degrees, the information that's given out, the experiments and the exercises, all of them contribute to this. And the mantras that we're talking about here, the vowel sounds, are one of the techniques that is, they comprise the experiments and the exercises which when we begin to master them a little bit, meaning that we are consciously able to use them for a desired effect, then we are able to bring about, eventually, the initiatory process in our own consciousness. And we can also help others bring about this process as we work with them and live with them in our families, in the people living around us, and so forth out in the world. So that the initiation process is psychologically the means by which we see clearly what has been in the past, the cause of the present moment, and what in the present moment is the foundation upon which we're going to visualize and build and create in the future. And initiation is the full consciousness, the full possible consciousness at any given moment of that process. It is in effect bringing together three different time spans, three different times, the past, the present, and the future. And we can see the three in one. We see causes in the past, and then we can see the effects in the future. We can, in our minds, create causes and bring about certain effects, as we can in the world of science or in the world of everyday living. We can also keep in our minds the possible result of something that we want in the future. And because we want that in the future, we visualize it and create it and we make it live and living and powerful as a state of reality in our consciousness. And we say that, that is in the future as far as the material world is concerned. It's in the present, in the consciousness. But the future, in the material sense, the manifestation that we want in the future, is the cause of what we're now going to do in the present moment in the material world. So the future can be the cause of the present. We can literally change our consciousness by this kind of understanding. It's very important to see this because psychology is basically a study of the three relationships the past, the present, and the future in our consciousness. Also, this is a means by which we can relate the conscious and the unconscious. That is, the past, for many of us, is unconscious. We've forgotten much of the past. The future is unconscious for many of us. We do not really know what's going to happen in the future. But in mysticism, at the study of Rosicrucian uh, occultism, that is, the study of energies and the uses of those energies, we can create visually in such a way with thought forms, and we can fill them with light, with these vowel sounds, so that the thought forms will become so powerful that they will become the reality of our consciousness, and we will know the future to some degree. We will know that the future is going to be changed at least by our creative thought form making, and the person who takes the full responsibility for his life, or as much as he possibly can, will do this in varying degrees according to his proficiency. And the experiments and the exercises that are given to us in the monographs are the means by which this is accomplished. Therefore, what we call the history and mystery of initiation, which is the official title of this course in case you've forgotten. This, this in, the, in the history and mystery of initiation, we are dealing with the past, which is the history, we're dealing with the unconscious aspect, which is the mystery, 
And the initiatory process is the, the, the means by which we bring all this together to make ourselves conscious of possibilities and to be able to use laws and principles to which we'll manifest in the ways we want, we want them to. Then the next step would be, of course, to make ourselves conscious of God's laws as much as we possibly can, God's will, the will of the masters, to cooperate with what the masters may have in mind for the human race in the future. And when we can do that, we can then manifest the full power of cosmic consciousness in a practical way. And those Kushan uh, techniques, such as we're talking about here this afternoon, these techniques are not uh, uh, mysterious techniques. They're not magical in the superstitious sense of that word. They are, however, definitely uh, given to us so that we can use energies and vibrations and we can bring about desired effects. Now, I go into this because many students don't realize that if you really want to create something that's great and wonderful for yourself, your family, for the human race, if you want to serve mankind, bring about better conditions for people on this planet, and you want to bring into cooperation the cosmic will and your own soul consciousness, you can do this by the wonderful technique of using vowel sounds. You just automatically bring yourselves into an achievement in this way. With the intention in the consciousness in the heart and in the mind, you choose the vowel sound that you want. And again, I want to refer you to you the descriptions that are given to those who go to the convocation rituals in the temples uh, and the um, lodges, chapters throughout the country. And you can uh, avail yourselves of the opportunity to learn and pay attention to those descriptions and use certain vowel sounds accordingly. We're going to uh, use another vowel sound here, another rhythm, and another application of the vowel sound, ow. And I want to try to demonstrate the effect of the rhythm once again. I would like very much for you to keep in mind the word love. And just use the word love. See it in your consciousness. Create a symbol of what you think the most wonderful human manifestation of divine love could be. This each one of you must do for yourself. Keeping in mind that what you visualize is a symbol of the manifestation of divine love. And then we are going to sing the words Aum, 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 Aum. And on the notes you will sing Aum, 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 Aum. aum. See? Now, as you do that, keep in your mind, this takes a little discipline, it may be a little hard for some of you to do two things at one time, but if you will just visualize the symbol that you can think of in your mind that will be the most wonderful symbol of divine love in human life, then you will be able to reinforce that and feel the, the, the tremendous vividness and the realization of what that can be as you continue to do the vow signs. Now, first of all, do the visualization. Just take a moment and do the visualization. It may be the love of a child. It may be helping somebody. It may be sharing. Keep that in mind, and I want you to sing, following me, Aum, Aum, Aum. Okay, now keep your visualization in mind and sing it.
I would like for you to uh, use uh, another application of the vowel sound, which is the application of the sound to actually serve humanity. I would like for you to um, first of all realize that in doing these vowel sounds and in repeated deep breaths, which you must take in order to do vowel sounds, you are filling yourself with energy. And as you fill yourself with energy and use up a certain portion of it, if you generate more energy than you need, then you have something to give away. Just as on the material plane, if you have more than you actually need, then you have something you can share and give away. Uh, our selfishness, naturally, most often does not permit us to do that on the pure material plane. But actually, we are able in our consciousness to generate so much psychic energy and so much cosmic energy by taking deep breaths, receiving into the body as much loose as we can, by using the vowel sounds, we're able to generate more and more of that energy and stimulate it. Then we, we, we create a, a, a picture in the mind and we send it out and we cause it to be free of our aura. It goes outside our consciousness when we drop it into the subconscious mind. It becomes free of our control. And then if we have filled it with purpose, with life, with meaning, and the picture is clear, it will go out into the world of human thought, and there it being filled with cosmic energy and noose, which we have breathed into it, it will then do what it needs to do independently of our directing it at any given time. In other words, we don't have to direct the thought form. We just turn it over to the subconscious, and the subconscious then uses it in accordance with the meaning and purpose of it, the soul's will at that time. So what we want to do is to, uh, is to realize consciously and with the mind that we are using a wonderful technique and that we are being given the privilege as human beings to deal in the world of thought forms. This makes it possible for us to uh, do more than just be physical activists. Now we must be practical in the world. We must get out and vote, for example. You just can't get somebody in by creating thought forms in a particular political office. Uh, if you had enough people doing this proficiently enough, you perhaps could do it, but we are not yet developed as a human race, and we don't have enough rose bushes in the world to know how to do this. So we must realize that uh, the power of thought is primary. We must be physically active and we must be practical, but you cannot be practical and you cannot be active physically without, first of all, clearly thinking and producing the thought that you really want to produce in order to produce the correct action. This is again the application of all the triangle. Uh, the first part being the creation of the thought, the second part being the uh, projection of the thought out into space in the condition that you want to change, and then the third part of the triangle is the actual change that is made possible. And the result of that can be really miraculous sometimes. You can see wonderful things happen as a result of this. But the power of the vowel sounds in producing this cannot be overestimated. Many people think that uh, they cannot use vowel sounds if they are living in a condition or in a place where it is embarrassing to them. Other people are around, and you have neighbors and members of your family that talk to you in certain ways, which we will not mention here in this class, because you're doing vowel sounds and we are not. Uh, uh, we're not uh, unsympathetic to this problem, but there is a way that the most Christian student can get around this and he can fool the people. Not all the time, maybe, but some of the time. And you can fool the people by doing vowel sounds inwardly, mentally. You can do them in your consciousness, subjectively, and make them so powerful inside your mind by creating the sound of the vowel sound, just as you create the picture of the thought form that you want to create that you can inwardly hear and create the necessary results. You can literally create vibrations psychically by creating inside yourself those sounds without ever pronouncing them out here in the physical world. And this is a good thing for you to practice every once in a while, even if you don't have to, because it makes it possible for you to hear inside yourself psychically what you are used to saying out here physically. 
So just as you are able to visualize walking someplace, or visualize a picture, or visualize cooking in your kitchen, or visualizing something else like a great work of art, or uh, a building, if you're a professional person, so you can visualize <coughs> inwardly sound. Beethoven was deaf from the time he was 29 and 30 years of age until he went through transition at age 57. And his greatest works of music were created after he was stone dead. He could not hear a physical thing. He could not hear any of his music physically produced by instruments or by voice. But he could hear all of it inside himself. And he was able to write such great music because inwardly he was able to say, I hear psychically and I am able to produce that music psychically. So we want, we want to learn to do this because this is the way we develop our psychic nature. And therefore, I want you to practice this. You do a vowel sound like Aum or like Rama. Do it physically and then take a moment and hear it inside yourself exactly like you've done it inwardly. Then later on, if you ever need to do it inside yourself, you can do it and you can produce the necessary results and you can experiment. You can do the vowel sounds inside yourself and then you can sense the effects in your physical body and in your feeling nature and in your clarity of thought. You can inwardly, literally concentrate on the words by closing your eyes and by hearing the words. Make it clear, real. Make it so real that it is real in your psychic consciousness like it seems to be real when you're physically sinking. Now I would like to say that we're going to have the privilege here in this class this afternoon of going through not an exercise, but an actual mystical projection process by which we are going to help change the world. These techniques are given to us in the monographs, and we can simply do it this afternoon by creating thought forms pictures as symbols, we can drop those thought forms into the subconscious mind, and then we can use the vowel sounds to give them power and energy, and then we are going to send them out to have their effect on the people in the world in these various categories. Now, these categories I will name, and we will, after I name them, we will make mention of the kind of symbol that would be easiest for the whole class to create it in order to symbolize what we're trying to do. As for example, in the field of politics, we want to change the political consciousness of mankind. And we want to make the political consciousness of mankind so different that politics would be the means by which we can use power to bless mankind instead of trying to hurt and harm and use people for our personal benefit. We have to realize that there's much to be done in the future. This may take centuries, but we are in the process of doing that right here now. And we can do it with the wonderful knowledge that's given to us in the most crucial teachings. And so we're going to do that here as a practical thing. We're going to do vowel sounds, Aum, Ra, Ma, um, as we have been doing them, after we have visualized the symbol. Now, first of all, I'm going to ask 
you to go through the technical process of drawing a circle around this group. And this is going to bring us even more close to together than we have been in the past. And for purposes of this afternoon's work, in the next few minutes, we're going to be able to bind ourselves together, not physically, but psychically. Our auras will be more blended, and we will be able to build within this circle uh, the realization of absolute unity. And in this consciousness of oneness or unity, we're going to be able to send out as one being the picture that will be the means by which the world will change. Consequently, the first category will be politics. And I want you to realize what we just said. The world needs to be changed, and we can help do this. We, as individuals, are not in a position to do much politically, perhaps, except vote and try to talk to a few people about what we consider to be our political concepts of freedom and humanitarian activities and thoughts and realizations and so forth. But we can certainly create the mystical thought forms that can help people change their consciousness. So in the field of politics, we're going to use the symbol of the President of the United States in his office. And we're going to let that symbol stand for all the governments and all the political concepts of the world. And then we're going to visualize that picture in such a way that it's going to be real and for the purposes of the soul or the subconscious. <clears throat> we're going to make it the language or the symbol of political activity and change. We're going to then send out the energy and the thought form with the intention that cosmic will be done in the consciousness of the man. So we're going to visualize it, but visualize it in your mind. The picture of the President of the United States is very clear in your mind. Hold it in your mind. Now take a deep breath. Sing with me.
realize that money is being used primarily by mankind for selfish reasons and in order to fulfill the cosmic concept of the use of divine energies and material energies, we must understand that there needs to be a change of the uses of money. Money is, in fact, the precipitation of the divine love nature of the world. And when we realize what the, the great statement of Jesus meant when he used the phrase, where your heart is, there will be your treasure also, and where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He was talking about the fact that we go get what we love, we buy what we love, we spend our energies and our time and our money on what we love. And we need to understand that the love aspect of the universe needs to be realized and redirected uh, by those who uh, are in a tune with the cosmos. What we wanted to do is to use the consciousness aspect of this technique in order to do that. So let us picture the bank in the neighborhood or in a town and use it as a symbol of the money principle and that money might become truly creative and helpful to mankind, a blessing instead of a curse as it so often is. We want the money aspect of our life to become the carrier of divine love. And therefore, the money systems of the world can be creative and instead of destructive as they now are. Let us, um, therefore, picture the bank clearly. Take a deep breath. Sing. Oh. picture a cathedral or a church so that religion is no longer a big business and a mere mechanical operation as it is now so often, but it is actually the mystical revelation of divinity. We need to do this for mankind. Let us picture a great cathedral as a symbol, see it vividly, see it as a place of the consciousness of divinity. Take a deep breath. Let us picture the healing professions of the world, those who are giving themselves professionally as well as personally to the healing of mankind in any way whatsoever. Let's realize that if the great healing energy is the soul and the cosmic energy of the universe, and that all professional people in the field of healing will come to know this, and that healing as a profession will become a blessing more and more for mankind, that people will be more and more dedicated to it, and that all the professions can give themselves to this great process of healing man's consciousness, whether it be physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual. So let us picture a hospital as a symbol. Take it for that. a manufacturing plant which is dedicated to the creation of goods and services so that man can be blessed and not as we so often are cursed by the possessions of material things. Picture the manufacturing plant. Take a deep breath. The mystical philosophy of the world must be given out to mankind. And as Rose Bruchinora has said to us, the order is just one of many ways that this can be done. The order's teaching is now in the philosophy and science departments of the universities and 
colleges and the educational systems, and it is now seeping into the New Thought Movement, and it is affecting man's religious and educational thoughts. And we want to make sure that this increases so that the world is changed by the dedication that we can inspire people in the field of mysticism. We need to be proud of mysticism as solutions. And in order to be able to affect the world, let us picture the, the beloved imperator of our order, and let us picture him in his office as the imperator, the work that he has to do, which is our work, which uses it as a symbol of the mystical work throughout the world. Take a deep breath. Down and touch the souls that wait and stir our minds with thoughts divine. Cast out all evil and all sin and take into the world of love our hearts and psychic selves. That thus merged ourselves shall be but self of God. So motivated. 